And on a related topic, on July 2nd, Venezuelan President Nicolas Maduro approved the U.S. request to restart direct talks between the countries. Experts commented to Telesur that several domestic factors pushed the Biden administration to the talks, which will also have implications for the Venezuelan elections at the end of this month. Special Envoy Yunus Honor with the story. Venezuela's President Nicolas Maduro announced the restart of talks in his weekly TV program Con Maduro Mas. For two continuous months, I have received from the government of the United States the proposal to reestablish talks and the direct dialogue. After thinking about it for two months, I have accepted and next Wednesday. The first virtual meeting took place on July 3rd with Venezuelan National Assembly President Jorge Rodriguez representing his country. On the social media platform X, Rodriguez stated that the dialogue will continue in the framework of the previous talks in Qatar. Franco Vielma says that talks will focus on oil. One of the topics will be the renewal of the license number 44 from the United States that permitted a certain margin of case-by-case -case discretion concerning companies that want to enter your relation with Venezuela. Vielma adds that besides exemptions to sanctions, the situation of the Venezuelan company Citco, as well as Venezuelan treasury bonds might be discussed. Sanctions do affect the Venezuelan economy, but according to Professor Rafael Lloris, it is the U.S. that is in an increasingly desperate situation. Uh, because of the, the situation in, in Eastern Europe uh, that led to rising oil prices that impacted the popularity of Biden, the inflation has been one of the main reasons why uh, he lost his support here in the United States and that uh, weakens you know, his candidacy for the re-election. So then... The agreement of 2023 signed in Qatar foresaw the easing of sanctions on Venezuela's oil industry with cooperation in, in repatriating Venezuelan immigrants in exchange. Uh, and a third reason, which is also very much domestic, is, is the increase in immigrants recently in the last few years on the border, wherein uh, Venezuelan numbers have increased as well. Concerned about the upcoming elections, the Biden administration seeks to ease migration pressure. The U.S. signed the migration agreement with Panama only one day after Panama's new president took office. And Biden also wants to show to the Latin American voters that he differs from Trump in being able to dialogue with Latin American countries, says the U.S. professor, with consequences for the Venezuelan opposition. In the agreements reached between Caracas and Washington in Qatar, with the mediation of the country, the Venezuelan opposition had no participation at all. The expert emphasizes that opposition leaders such as Maria Colina Machado and Omar Barbosa, Secretary General of the Unitary Democratic Platform, were not even informed by the U.S. learning about the agreement from President Maduro's public announcement, and concludes, They are secondary or even less important from the United States' point of view. They don't play a role in these talks and have no room to present proposals or undertake political maneuvers. For the Venezuelan opposition, Omar Barbosa welcomed the restart of talks and stated that his organization is not part of them. It is a bilateral dialogue between the government of Maduro and the government of the United States. Concerned with his own election, it seems that U.S. President Biden has dealt a blow to the Venezuelan opposition. Yunus Sonar, Telesur, Caracas, Venezuela.